Hi, I'm uh, Dan Kalambi from Basketball England, the um, lead strength and conditioning coach. Today we're going to look at um, stability and bracing. And if you look at uh, one of the previous videos, we looked at um, creating stability in the lower body, so jump lanterns, nice and stable. So we'll refer to that video uh, if you want um, more information on lower body stuff. Now today, we're going to look at creating stability through the trunk. Um, so by trunk, I mean if we were to cut off our legs, cut off our arms, that's what we're left with, our trunk. So pretty much all, uh, all movement and all force and power is transferred through our trunk in some form or the other, whether it's running, jumping, rotating, bracing. Okay, so the um, first thing we're going to look at is how to teach an athlete to brace. Now the most simple way to do this is uh, to have an athlete stand in an athletic position. So knees bent, chest upright, back straight, Okay, and then just have a coach or another player push them on either the shoulder or the hip and they try and resist. Okay, so that what they're doing in order to resist is contracting through our abdominals, the glutes, maybe some of the quads and the back, right, to resist that movement. Right? Very simple drill, just push around 10 seconds, 20 seconds and repeat. Um, okay, then a, then a slightly more challenging, we can get into a push up position. Okay, you're going to get into a push-up position in exactly the same concept. It's going to be nice and solid in a push-up position. Now, with the push-up position, you want your head, hips, and uh, heels all in the line, all in a row. Um, so I'll explain. So nice and straight, head, shoulders, hips, um, and heels, all in a straight arm. You're not sinking down, you're not up like this. So while in that push-up position, get the, um, the other athlete to push on the shoulders, the either side, Push through the hips here or on the tailbone. Okay, nice and lightly, and the athlete just braces, so they're resisting the movement. Okay, wherever they're getting pushed, they're resisting the movement. All right, again, we can do this for 30 seconds at a time with each athlete. Um, start nice and light, and remember, very important push on the hip bone here, hip bone here, shoulders here, here, and then the tailbone. All right, because that way we can brace. Any other place, we might cause, um, uh, cause a uh, like bad positions, which could lead to, uh, to overloading or injuries, okay? So we want through the hips, through the tailbone, through the shoulders, okay? So again, push up position and resist the movements. Okay, so now your um, athlete has a concept of what it feels like to brace and resist movement, okay? So they should have an idea of that feeling through their trunk, contracting nice and solid um, to resist any, any movement that uh, they're getting pushed into. Okay, just, just to touch on the point that if um, the athlete's really struggling to get into that push-up position, then just work on that. Okay, so if they're struggling to get into that push-up position, uh, be solid. We can make it a little bit easier on them. So we raise up the box and then we still can push. Okay, um, hopefully all the athletes will be able to stabilize in the push-up position, okay? So then to progress that, Gonna get into a plank position, all right? So with the plank position, ensure that our elbows are underneath our shoulders. And again, same concept. Straight line, straight body, okay? Now, what we're looking at in this movement is to resist movement through our hips. So we're bracing through our trunk, through our core, through our obliques, through our back, okay? To stabilize the glutes. Um, to avoid rotation through the hips. So a very simple drill. Um, just grab something real quick. Okay, we're just going to use the target. It could be anything, basketball, foam roller, a wall, whatever it is. We get into a plank position here. Now reach out, nice and stable, and touch. Reach out, and touch. Okay, and resist the movement through the hips. All right, so uh, from the side, Touch and touch. Okay. Athlete that struggles with that, we can go with a wider base. So feet further apart. Okay. Um, if they're good, feet closer together. Okay. To really challenge yourself, you can put a foam roller on your back, just uh, on your tailbone here. So the foam roller is here. We reach out and we touch without the foam roller falling off. That would really challenge them to make sure that their hips are stable. That's a good external cue for them to figure out how to stabilize their hips. Okay? That's a nice, simple drill, working on bracing um, and 
control and volume of your Again, uh, if we're looking at uh, reps or for time, we want to put a decent amount of time under tension. Uh, so, you know, build work capacity through the trunk. So maybe 20 touches for one, two, three, four, or for 30 seconds at a time, reaching out and touching. Again, if they can't hold a plank, that's where we start. We hold a nice solid plank position for 30 seconds. So we start at a push-up position. If they're good at that, we can go into a plank position. If they're good at that, we can work on touches, okay? So I shouldn't have skipped over that. Plank, basic, when they're solid at that, we can add in movement and touches. Okay, just to touch on a, a few progressions uh, of the, the plank touches that we just showed you. Okay, I'm going to show you with the foam roller. Okay, so I'm going to position the foam roller nice and stable in my back and get down into that plank position. And then I reach and touch. Now I'm stable, but if I'm unstable, straight away that foam roller falls off and that gives me an external cue that I wobble my hips. I let the athlete figure it out. Okay, so you just place it there, tell them to touch, falls off, put it back, and let them figure out the body position that they need to be in, and now have a really good transfer into their learning. Um, okay, and then do some progressions with that. If they're really solid with the touches, we can play around, okay, be, uh, be imaginative. So in, in essence, what we're looking at is more time off the floor, we can pick things up and move them while keeping those hips still. We have a teammate in front of us, we can reach out, touch hands, or we can go from here, a bit more challenge, and lift up into that plank, into that push-up position, and then back down, combine it, lift up into that push-up position, reach out, and back down. Okay, all the time, the focus is on keeping the hips still. So if you see your athlete doing this, and there's, no, there's too much movement in the hip, regress them back to something more simple. Um, maybe it could be as simple as into the plank position, nice and solid, just lifting up one leg, lifting up the other leg, okay, lifting up, touching the shoulder, touching the shoulder, okay, really simple stuff, another one I like is a cone stack, and if you've got five cones, they reach out, they grab a cone, one, two, three, four, five, and then back, so that's a good, you know, six, seven seconds, they're uh, balancing on three points rather than four, so it's a lot more challenging for the hip. Okay, there's some really good progressions you can try in a prone plank position. Okay, um, really good for bracing. Okay, now we're going to look at some uh, some variations for our obliques to work through uh, side of our body to resist uh, flexion. Okay, uh, side flexion. Okay, and uh, a bit of rotation as well. Also, this has benefits, we resist it, but we can create it as well, create efficient force going through. Simple side plank. Again, elbow under, uh, under shoulder, nice and stable. You can put your foot out in front, okay? And then, uh, all right? So we can do that both for time. Right, again, straight lines. Ankle bone, knee, hip, shoulder, nice straight line on dips. So not too up too high, not down too low. Okay, uh, variation to that. We can be up and we can raise our leg. Okay, a bit more challenging. We can hold the star position for time. Okay. Um, other ones, we can create flexion. So go down and up, nice and controlled. Down and up. <clears throat> what we're looking at, we don't want our shoulder falling too far forward. We don't want our hips falling back. Um, so we've learned, uh, <clears throat> we started off with bracing, standing up, okay, really simple exercise. And we went to the floor, prone position, okay, and pushing around, okay, learning uh, or teaching the athlete what it feels like to brace and stabilize, okay, controlling their hips. And when they're pretty solid at that, we can move into a, a lot more like kind of relevant positions like upright, because obviously we play basketball upright, so we have to convert what we do in a prone position into an upright stance. Okay, um, really simple concept, okay, we, it just in essence, you imagine you've got a straight line going down the middle of your body, okay, we're in that athletic position, okay, so if we can brace and control movement when we move across that midline and away from that midline and we're stable where we need to be, that's going to really transfer into uh, on the court movement, speed, agility, and change of direction, 
those sort of things. So if we plant our foot and able to control our hips, we can drive through and change direction. But if we plant our hips and we're out of position, okay, that's an injury risk. And also we've got to then get back into that advantageous position to drive off. Um, okay, so really simple uh, drills to start with. I'm going to grab a basketball. This is not basketball, but you get the concept. Okay, so I'm in that um, athletic position. Okay, I'm just going to go up and move to the side. Okay, what I don't want is my hip driving out here. I just want to take the ball far away from the midline as I can while stabilizing. Okay, really simple. You start here and rotate across while stabilizing on the lower body. Okay, so we don't want to, as we're rotating, we don't want our knees coming in into a bad position. Nice and locked and stable, coming through. Okay, very simple. All right, um, we can grab a dumbbell. Hold on one second. We can grab a dumbbell. Now, if you don't have a dumbbell, you can just use a shoe or anything, a foam roller in your hand, um, something to grab onto and move with. Okay, so now, in that solid stance position, then we can go up with the dumbbell and then over with the dumbbell while controlling it right through my trunk, controlling the movement. Okay, I'm going to start on the opposite hip, come back and rotate and come through again. Controlling rotation, not allowing your body to move out of line um, or move out of uh, a good anatomical position. And then the last one again, rotate in front and come across. Okay, very easy, our, hips are, our feet are under our hips, I'll show you on the other side, straight up nice and easy, we're bracing, we're stabilizing, over, controlling that movement through our trunk, coming back, following it with my eyes, I'm not dipping the shoulder, I'm just rotating through, keeping a nice stable body, and then from the hip, up in front, and coming across. Okay, really simple and easy, stuff we can throw into our warm-up, just little activation things. Okay, then we're going to get into a split stance. Now it becomes a bit more challenging because we're changing uh, our, our base. Okay, we're now uh, we're on a narrow line. We're straight forward. Um, split stance more more challenging to, to stabilize and brace. Same movements up and down, over and back. Starting that opposite hip, come forward and back. Now what you don't want is that knee coming in. Nice and stable for you through your chest, through your glutes, lower body, solid, and then up in front, okay? So opposite arm, opposite leg, just try the other side, up and over, back round, and up in front, okay? So think about the concepts you've got. Um, got that centre midline, Okay, we're taking it away from that midline, but at the same time controlling it, so we're under control. We can go far, and we've got the ability to control and come back. Think about that in reference to basketball. Um, very important skill to have. Go into a split start, same thing, rotate and up. Be imaginative with these drills. You can have a basketball, you can rotate across, lean over, rotate back. Okay, as long as we're, what we're looking at is stability below the hips, movement above the hips, okay? Um, challenge that even more, add movement. So we've got our basketball, gonna go across. You may have seen this loads of time in the warm-up. Again, stability below the hips, movement above the hips. Very important in basketball. Again, be imaginative, think about what you want to see. Okay, nice, good uh, alignment. Um, okay, and rotation, bracing those sort of things are through the movements, okay? So if you don't have dumbbells, use something else, use a basketball, whatever it may be. But that's a nice solid way to resist movement and progress and be stable, okay? Which will transfer into lots of different different things. So, um, essentially I'll just explain a few things, okay? So we've, uh, in one of the first videos we looked at, we looked at um, landing mechanics and being stable below our hips. Okay, not allowing the knees to come in, single leg landings. Okay, um, a common thing that happens with single leg landings is you might be stable from the hip to the knee to the foot, the upper body is moving, right? So hopefully, once you do some of these drills, the athlete starts to really understand how to brace, and how to control their trunk. So you can land, and they're more stable here, 
okay? So when they're jumping for a rebound, they can land, they can, they can uh, absorb force through the ground, okay, resist rotation, okay? But it's not just about resisting rotation, it's about, also about creating rotation and through force, okay? I'm not gonna go into it too much because it's a bit more advanced in this video, um, but then we can start to develop rotational power because we've created, um, created stability, all right? So in essence, you have to be stable before you can put yourself in an unstable environment, if that makes sense. So you have to learn how to be stable and then you can really push the boundaries and challenge your athlete in unstable environment, lots of movement, um, lots of power production while remaining stable and solid. Okay, think about the jumps. We can have um, a weight in our hand, okay? Really simple drill. Or something just to focus on. Um, so we're jumping forward. Okay? By pressing out and being solid, I'm creating stability and bracing the upper body, which automatically allows me to control my body better and correct alignment force. Okay, does that make sense? Jump forward, coming through from the side. Okay, I'm creating stability through here. So that's a little advanced. Um, Tip, but hopefully you get the idea of why we're doing these drills, okay? It's all about coaching these drills, okay? I can give you drill after drill after drill to do, but you have to understand the rationale for why we're doing it, okay? So we're doing it because we want to control um, forces, we want to control rotation, we want to brace and absorb forces. And in order to do that, we have to be stable and solid through our trunk, but then once we're stable and once we're bracing, okay? We can then create force and know that when we're landing, when we change the direction, we have the ability to brace, stable, nice, perfect alignment to change direction and go. Okay, so if you understand that, you can play around with it and come up with your own drills. But it's all about progression. Create stability. Firstly, understand, make sure the athlete understands what bracing is. So the push-up position, the plank position. Okay, learning how to use their trunk. Think about a coaching cue, getting punched in the stomach. Okay, you're gonna brace, it's stable. So if they land it, think about getting punched in the stomach when you land, you're gonna be stable. Once they understand that, you can start challenging them, okay? Don't challenge them before they can brace, because ultimately, that looks horrendous, it's gonna cause injuries, um, and it's not advantageous for performance. So start slow, build it up, and hopefully we can get somewhere really good. Thank you. Um, any questions, give me a shout, email us below. Um, there's probably some links in this video to previous videos that are now on YouTube, so check them out. And um, yeah, look forward to hearing from you. Give me a shout, let me know how you're getting on. Thank you. <coughs>